nice to be back after an Easter service. Feels good to be back. Shall we do the confessions together? I believe in the Almighty God, our Father and Creator. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, God and my Savior. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin. He suffered, died and rose again. He ascended into heaven. He shall soon come again. I believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who is worshipped and my guide. I believe in holy fellowship, faithful giving, and service to God in this church. I believe the Holy Bible is the perfect word of God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I am. And I can do what it says I can do. Today, as I learn the word of God, here in my spiritual family, I am blessed, healed, and anointed for a holy and victorious living. I will never again be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless us. Please be seated. <coughs> Every month, the first Sunday, we want to partake of the Lord's holy table in commemorating his sufferings and his holy death on the cross to carry our sin and our pain. And we studied this a little more in detail last week as we were commemorating his death on Good Friday. And this morning we want to thank him for on the cross he adopted us and made us his own children. On the cross we were adopted to be called the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. We got our body from Adam's human nature, but God's Holy Spirit came into our spirit as we were born again, belonging to God Almighty. Hallelujah. And we thank God for that. We thank God for that. Many of us, we speak our mother tongue as our, uh, you know, born language, and we speak English as a foreign language. Similarly, we have our uh, body having its identity that comes from the earth. You didn't come from your parents. You came through your parents. You come from God who created us. And the fact that we belong to God Almighty and that he loves us and he cares for us and that God cared so much for us that he sent his own son to die on the cross as a propitiation, as a sacrifice for us sin on the cross and we thank him for that, holding the elements of communion in our hands in utmost respect as baptized believers qualified to partake of his table through a commitment to be completely belonging to him, shall we pray, asking him to bless the elements of communion, the bread symbolic of his holy body that was shattered on the cross, and the grape juice symbolic of his holy blood that was shed on the cross. This beautiful morning, Lord, we thank you for the covenant of your grace, for the promise of your peace, we thank you for the power of your resurrection. As we eat and drink of this elements, may your life and the power of your Holy Spirit flow in us. May we belong to you than even belonging to ourselves. May we, O oh God, be in absolute harmony with you, in absolute peace with you. And may your Holy Spirit be in total control of our lives, even as we partake of what you did for us on the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's eat of his holy body and drink of his precious blood together. Gracious Lord, we thank you again and again and again. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you that we belong to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Thank you, ushers. They are collecting the cups. I'm going to request all of you who like to see what happened uh, last uh, Friday with the Teens Church. Take a look.
You know, to see this place filled with teenagers, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19, in that age group, to see people worship God, kneel down, cry out, I think is so beautiful. You better take them to worship evenings where they enjoy God in the church so you won't have to cry tomorrow because they otherwise will find some other place to enjoy in music that is not constructive. Next program, VBS, starting this Tuesday. Vacation Bible School is happening for all the kids aged between 4 to 12. Sometimes it's so interesting, we have to tell the parents, you are not between 4 to 12, please stay outside. It's so interesting actually. Between the age of 4 to 12, uh, it's happening uh, where you have a lot of Bible teaching and activities. And then uh, in the afternoon, 3 p.m. onwards, again, for age groups between 13 to 19, they're dealing with some very important topics on how, what, what the Bible teaches uh, young people, teenagers on handling uh, physical transition when you transition from a child to a teenager in your adolescence. How do you handle your own body? How do you handle your mind? How do you handle relationships? You know, some people trust their phones more than other human beings. Uh, some people are scared when they don't have phone near them, but they have no fear if no one is near them. Uh, some people have problems with addictions. Some people have struggle on, don't know how to talk to God, don't know how to pray. So they're dealing with very important topics that is very important for adolescents. So that's happening in the VPS starting this Tuesday. Uh, just because it's free doesn't mean it's cheap. There's a huge price being paid to make it happen with so many volunteers who take off from their work. They take a week-long uh, holiday from their work life. You know, they make their investment into coming here and teaching somebody's children um, just so that uh, somebody's children can get blessed. There's a lot of investment going into it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad that uh, there is a a very committed minority who are very different from a majority. Majority, we come, we attend, we, we uh, consume the benefits and walk away. But there is a, a large minority uh, that contribute a lot, uh, more than just money. And that's why the church keeps growing. And we see so many things happening as people's lives are changed. I want to thank you all. I know it sounded like a snide for those of us who are very comfortable with Christianity. Actually, I was not trying to snide you. I was trying to hurt you so that, so that you will move from your pathetic Christianity into active following Christ Jesus. You know, move into following Christ by uh, expressing your love for God through actions that can be verified. This month, we are going to study from God's word on the Holy Spirit of God. You all have heard that word, Holy Spirit, right? We're going to study from God's word on the Holy Spirit of God. Let's read one scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter number 13 and verse number 14. Let's read. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You all hear this every Sunday, right? The grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us all. So, Pastor what are you going to start with benediction? No. What the Bible here says is this. As much as... No, let me come to it from another angle. Many of us, we somehow don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We can't understand relationship with the Holy Spirit. There is a mental block. We have a feeling that only if I'm a pastor, only if I'm a prophet, only if I'm a anointed healing evangelist, only if I have the grace of God to do something unusual, only then I can actually have Holy Spirit in my life. I am married to a person who is not a believer. I have children who are not walking with God. I myself, I don't know if I have the Holy Spirit. Will Holy Spirit talk to me? Listen, if you think you are qualified for God to love you, if you think you're qualified for the grace of Jesus to come in your life, then you're qualified for the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. 
All the three are in the same sentence. Read that again. The Bible says in Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the... You see, three things is for all. Let's say that together. Is for... The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave us his only one and only begotten son. God loved us. Now we understand that. Even if I'm a sinner, God loves me. Just like how accepting the love of God is a reality I can practice. Just like how experiencing the grace of the Lord Jesus is a reality I can practice. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit is a reality each one of us can practice. We can experience fellowship. What is fellowship? Easiest way to understand, two fellows in the same ship. Okay. Uh, 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 communion, interaction. That's fellowship. <laughs> what is grace? Grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Uh, it's beyond mercy. <laughs> I'll explain this. I was uh, going to do a Bible study. And uh, I was on my motorbike. Actually, my calculation went wrong. Usually... Uh, after the signal turns green for people from my right hand side to cross at one of the junctions in Bangalore, when it turns red for them, it usually is green from my side. So I thought signal was like how it worked till yesterday, but signal had changed. I didn't know that. So I saw amber light for them on the other side. I could see for, for my right hand side traffic, it turned orange or amber or whatever that cautionary color is. And then it turned red. I didn't check if it's green for me. Because usually when it is red for them, it's green for me. So I took my bike, I went forward. Actually, there was a petrol bunk nearby, so I was rushing to the petrol bunk. And I had to fill petrol and then go to the Bible study where I was going. <laughs> and there was a policeman standing there. He whistled and he caught me. By the time I realized, I was the only one who jumped. Uh, so I knew I jumped the signal because no one else was with me. You know, in Bangalore when uh, it turns green, already people are moving, right? Uh, they have more faith like me. Even before it turns green, you know it's going to be green, right? So people are already moving. <coughs> I realized I was the only one moving. And the police said, come. So I went to him. I said, sir, you changed the signal. He said, that's what, first you should look. <laughs> Pastor went through a message on the roadside. <laughs> Those days I wasn't a pastor, but anyway, um, I heard him and he knew the mistake I made because they had changed the signal order. Instead of giving me green, after a red appeared for them, they gave another side green, so they had changed it. So I explained to the police, he showed me mercy. He showed me mercy. He said, next time don't repeat, that's mercy. What is grace? When I went to the petrol bunk, if he paid for my petrol, that would be grace. Which never happens, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just explaining. Jesus not only showed us mercy, but he showed us grace. Am I, am I helping anybody? Grace is one way ahead of mercy. Mercy is just annulling, cancelling, nullifying of punishment. That's mercy. Grace is going beyond and showing the love of God for us. God loves us. Jesus shows grace to us. And if you and I are qualified for both through the act of faith, it's faith that qualifies us for both. Then the third one is also qualified through faith. If you believe, you can have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit is a reality we can accomplish through a life of faith. But the problem here is, uh, somehow people think of Holy Spirit as someone very impersonal. When you think of Jesus, you think of a human being. Lord Jesus, human being. Why? Because he appeared in a body. <coughs> he was a human by body. And so the minute you say, Lord Jesus, we think of somebody who was maybe six foot tall or a little more, who had 
a, a, a complexion that's not too different from ours, uh, who experience life like we do. Even though the Bible calls him Lion of Judah, you never imagine Jesus walking on four limbs. Never. Even though the Bible calls him the Rose of Sharon, you never see Jesus portrayed as a flower in a pot. Even though you see Jesus, our Lord, called the Lamb of God in your mind, he never appears in our mind as a goat or a ram. Because we relate with his humanity. The problem is many people don't relate with the fellowship of the Holy Spirit because they somehow connect with him as a fire, as a wind. We connect with him as a power. We connect with him and understand the Holy Spirit as impersonal and not a person. We look at him as a power, not as a person. <laughs> and, and the problem, when you don't look at him as a person and you only look at him as a power, is you can't have fellowship with him. How many of you can express your love? You can express your love with... Uh, your pillow. You can't. You can't express your joy with uh, your table. You can't say thanks to your chair. Chair, I thank you for holding me up. Everybody in the world drops me, but you kept me up. Nobody will ever turn around and thank their chair for holding them up for the last seven hours in the office. In the last seven hours, Five people from the HR, from the boss office, from the secretaries, from the colleagues, all ditched you and put you on the floor. But you chair, you kept me up for seven hours. Thank you. Nobody thanks. Why? Because there is no relationship between that which has no emotions and we who have emotions. There is no relationship that which doesn't have intellect with us who have intelligence. We never thank the chair because it has no choice. It can't choose whom to hold up and whom to drop. We who have choice making power can't relate with those that don't have choice. <coughs> Nobody gets hurt when they take their old shirt, throw it off and put on a new, wear a new shirt. Is there anybody who looks at their shirt and says, please don't feel offended. I'm going to buy a new shirt. It's not that I don't like you. I like you. You covered me for the last three years. It's not that I'm being unfaithful to you. It's just that I want another shirt. It's, it's not that I love that shirt more than you. Does anybody talk like that? You need treatment if you do that. Because that shirt don't have the power to make a choice. And you have the power to make a choice. So you don't relate with it on that level. When you look at the Holy Spirit of God as a power, as a force, you are demeaning the personality of God to somebody that you cannot have fellowship with. And that is the danger of today's Christianity. We have removed the reality of the Holy Spirit from a person into a thing. For many people, they feel the Holy Spirit like you feel the wind. Or you feel the warmth. For many people, Holy Spirit is just, I, I felt him today. Holy Spirit is not just a feeling. He's a person. You can relate with the Holy Spirit. You can fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Because Holy Spirit of God, like the Lord Jesus, is emotional, is intellectual, and is very clear on choices. When you look at the Holy Bible, Holy Spirit told people, don't go there, go here, do that, do this. Making choices for people. Electricity is power. But electricity will never tell you, today don't on the light, on the fan. No. That is your choice. But when you go home, your wife can tell you. What to turn on, what to turn off. Your husband can tell you. Even your children. Why? Because they are people. They are persons. Power can never tell you. Power doesn't have choice making ability. 
It doesn't have that intelligence. Holy Spirit chooses for you. That's why when you have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, <laughs> even if you like that person, you won't marry that person because Holy Spirit will guide you whom to marry. In case you are planning to marry that person, don't take this as a word from God. This is just an example. If Holy Spirit told you to marry that person, you marry. Holy Spirit guides you. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit is very, very, very important. Many of the major decisions I have made in this church, I have made depending on the Holy Spirit. I, I wait till I can get some kind of an assurance. Is it Lord? Is it from you? And fellows like me, we struggle because <laughs> I feel bad when I say this. I get jealous sometimes when I meet people who hear from God for everything. God speaks to them which clothes to buy. God speaks to them what others should buy. I struggle. When I was getting married, I had to make up my mind. I met the girl, didn't like. and uh, But uh, uh, <laughs> it was the first girl I met for marriage. And uh, I began to pray. While praying, Holy Spirit clearly put in my heart, marry her. You know, when you don't want to hear the Lord, he's very clear. <laughs> I, I don't know how to say this. But Holy Spirit will never shout in your ears. Holy Spirit will never uh, pull you by your ears and say, obey. No, God will never treat you like a dog on a leash. God will treat you like a lamb on his pasture. You have to follow the shepherd. That night I remember sitting and praying and I felt the Holy Spirit saying, saying yes to her. And I told the Lord, Lord, I'll say yes to the next girl, but this one no. Because I already said no. Now it is the Pentecostal pride and ego of a humble man of God. <laughs> you know, Holy Spirit has no plan B. These are the problems. Holy Spirit doesn't have a button called Nota, none of the above, no. <laughs> and I continued to pray. The Lord said, very clearly in my heart, I can't say the Lord spoke, but I knew the assurance of God, this was God's plan. And I know how I struggled to call back and say, I changed my mind, say yes. Sometimes for people like me, it's very difficult because Holy Spirit doesn't speak clearly. You have to really wait on God and then after a long time, God will speak. Wow, it's very difficult waiting like that. In the meanwhile, all your friends are moving on. and You're waiting, God, say something, God, and God don't speak. Those are what I call moments of worship. Where you don't take his position and say, okay, if you don't decide, I decide, just bless me. No. Those are moments where you say, God, if you don't tell me, I'll wait because you are God. I can't take your place. I honor you. <laughs> Am I helping anybody here? Holy Spirit fellowships with us. He talks to us. He guides us. He guides us. That's why Jesus said, he will be your guide. And when he guides you, he will guide you in truth, not in facts. Not in fact. Facts are different from truths. The doctor will tell you your medical fact. God will tell you the truth of what will happen in your future. Your marks card will tell you the fact <laughs> of how well you did your exam. But God will tell you your future as a truth where he is taking you. Amen. Listening to the Holy Spirit is the best thing to do in life. Brothers and sisters, our choices can go wrong. God's choice will never go wrong. Amen. My marriage turned out to be such a blessing. Simply because I'm a good guy, but I listen. I'm blessed with a wonderful wife. But the point is, listening to the Holy Spirit is the key. Amen. For that, you need to stop listening to each other and talk to God. Fellowship with God. Listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. 
and respect his choices. You can grieve the Holy Spirit because Holy Spirit has emotions. It's a person. He gets grieved and the Bible says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Electricity power will never tell you, you never used me today, I feel bad. You misused me today, I feel terrible. No, he has no feelings. Sunlight will never tell you. How come you didn't look at me today? Everything you saw because I am there. But you never looked at me even once in the last whole week. Sunlight has no feelings. Holy Spirit has feelings. Holy Spirit is not just a power. He's a person. The biggest mistake of the Pentecostal church is treating Holy Spirit as if it's tongues. Holy Spirit is not his gifts. If I give you a pen, I don't have and I'm not giving. But if I give you a pen, I have pen, don't come with pen. I'm saying right now I don't have pen. If I give you a pen and if you go home and tell somebody, I got Johnson. <laughs> Johnson is in my pocket. <laughs> Pastor gave himself to me. That's not true. You are carrying my gift in your pocket. Tongues is a gift. You are not carrying Holy Spirit in your tongue. You are carrying his gift in your tongue. Many people can carry the gift of the Holy Spirit and have no relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Fellows, eh? clap then I will tell you. I am coming. Today's message is very good one. You should have said that but anyway. Many fellows take dowry from the wife and they love the dowry but not the wife. <laughs> Many people take Holy Spirit gift and love it. Prophecy, healing, miracles, oh they love it. But how's your fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Oh, that's there, huh? Yes. Gifts are different from the person. Don't run after the gift. It's like a man running after dowry. It's illegal. Run after the person of the Holy Spirit. Go for fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Come on, give God a big hand. I'm preaching good today. Absolutely. Holy Spirit is a person. He guides us in truth. Not just in the facts. Not just in realities. Not just in experiences. He leads us in truth. Truth is greater than experience. Amen. Truth is, is greater than a fact. Experience. You experience rejection in your place of work. Fact. They don't like you. Truth. You are getting the next promotion and going to lead the whole team. Only Holy Spirit can lead you in truth. Wow. Hallelujah. Many people say it's difficult for Christians. It's going to be very dangerous. I tell you in the last 10 years, this church more than double tripled. Because we don't live in the fact. We are led by the Holy Spirit. Come on church, give the Lord a big hand. <laughs> Let the Holy Spirit fellowship become the strength of everybody sitting here. Have fellowship with the Holy Spirit more than your fellowship with your mobile phone. Have more fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Some people treat their dog with so much love. Some people treat their cat with so much love. I went to one house, they told me, please don't sit on that chair. My cat will get upset. I, I, I respect you, whoever you are. Don't, in case you are listening to this message, don't get offended. But I felt funny. I was, they told me, please sit. They should have told me which chair to sit on. I went to sit. They're not that chair, Pastor. Please sit on this chair. I said, okay. That chair, my cat will come now. After a few minutes, cat came. <laughs> and he sat on that chair and looked at me as if he heard the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you 
You know, when you are a pastor of a growing church, you go through so many real experiences. Times when people have told me, if you don't mind, can you pray softly? Why? No, because my dog should not get angry. <laughs> Tie your dog somewhere and come. We are going to pray. <laughs> you show so much love for your screen time, for your animals and pets, and, and that's wonderful. I have pets. I love pets. But learn to value the Holy Spirit as God Almighty. Everybody wants the Holy Spirit to bless them and value their prayer. How about we valuing God as God first? It's so important that we fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Let me show you a scripture. John chapter 16 and verse number 7. The Bible says, nevertheless I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper. But if I go, Jesus our Lord was talking to his disciples, to you and me about the Holy Spirit. And he said, listen, somebody is going to take my place. I'm going. And I will send the Holy Spirit. Like how I was with you. Holy Spirit will be with you. I was with you in the boat. I was with you while healing the crippled. I was with you in the synagogue. I was with you in the storm. I was with you when you walked. I was with you when we plucked the figs. Like I was with you, another one will be with you. Treat him like you treat me. Wow. Value him like you value me. I go because I'm in my human body. But I'm going to come back to you as my spirit and treat that personality with value like you treat me. Respect the helper. God has no shame in calling himself our helper. I am, I am amazed. Junior technician who is a helper is ashamed to say I'm junior technician helper. They say I'm technician. They will not say I'm only helper. Because of pride. God is calling himself helper. Because he doesn't see us as volunteers, as religious nuts. He sees us as his children. And he says, of course I'll help you. I'll be your helper. Hallelujah. But question is, are we taking his help? If we are not taking his help, it's another way of insulting his presence. But pastor, I can't relate with the Holy Spirit because he doesn't have a body. Who told you he doesn't have a body? Who told you he doesn't have a body? Look at your hand. You see your hand? Don't start reading the lines. Just see the hand. <laughs> that is his body. When he dwells in you, you become his temple and you are his body. Yeah. Hallelujah. He works through you. He lives through you. He functions through you. When the Holy Spirit fills your life, you know, in Bangalore, there is one big problem. If you buy a property, stay in it. Not flats, but empty land. Because our law, our Karnataka State Land Act is so generous that it belongs to many people. <laughs> Same property. <laughs> they don't have time to fix it. But when the Holy Spirit is in you, you are not controlled by Karnataka Land Act. You are controlled by God who says, I am the owner of this one. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why we make statements like we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, not the garbage can of the devil. What do we mean? We mean we look at sickness and say, sickness, you have no place in me. Already Holy Spirit is in me. We look at bondage and say, bondage, you have no place in my life. I already belong to God. We look at curses and say, find another address because this one is already blessed in Christ Jesus. 
Learn to talk reality and talk truth. Talk truth to yourself. Why? Because you have become the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are planning to build the temple of God. God willing, this year we should start. We are planning, we are praying, we are working on that. <laughs> Why we have to build it? Because it won't build itself. Have you ever seen any uh, church building itself? Brick coming on brick? No. <laughs> God builds us as his temple. He builds our personality. He builds our character. He works in us. We are transformed by that work of the cross in our lives. And that's why fellowship with the Holy Spirit is very important. Many of us are half done temple of God. Window is not there. Door is not there. Why? Because that much fellowship is not there with the Holy Spirit. When he comes to fix us, we say, no Lord, no time today. Next year, annual fasting prayer, I'll come back. Don't do like that. Have deeper fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit guides us with convictions. How does he fellowship and build us? With convictions. Shall we use the word convictions? Many people say, no, Holy Spirit will give conviction only to the world. My brother, there is enough world in us for him to give us conviction. We all belong to God. But there is a difference between conviction and condemnation. These are two English words, but they look like uh, from same family, but they are opposites. Conviction is where the Holy Spirit points out the issue. Condemnation is where the devil attacks your identity. <laughs> when your dad and mom tell you, listen, what you did is wrong. But your enemy says, you are wrong. See the difference? If you didn't understand, you need Holy Spirit help. There's a difference between conviction and condemnation. Conviction is showing you where you need to grow and showing you what you need to correct. Condemnation is attacking your very identity and saying you are worthless and useless. Holy Spirit never says that because he is already in you. You are worthy. Hallelujah. You are wearing one watch. It shows you time. Not that he didn't know I have a point in what I am saying. You wear a watch, it shows you time. It costs you 3,000, 5,000 rupees for that watch. Another watch, one man showed me, 15 lakh rupees. I asked him, does it show you more than time? He said, no pastor, it's all diamonds. I came to this church wearing plastic watch. Look, today God gave me this watch. I said, okay, good. I told him, Sundays you wear it. Because I don't know when God will tell you, put it in the offering bag. Just <laughs> After that, I've not seen his watch. He's a good friend of mine. Why that watch is 15 lakhs? It also shows only time. This watch is 3000 rupees. That watch is 15 lakhs. Why? The value of that watch is not just because of the time it shows. But because of the worthy, valuable things that are studded on it. Diamonds studded on it. Put on it. Makes it. Very valuable, so large, you can almost see it with a microscope. But still, value goes up. You were worthless, but suddenly you become worthy. Not because your color changed, not because your eyebrow changed, <laughs> not because now you got a new certificate, nothing. Because somebody came into you who is worthier. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Once he has brought value to your life, he will never condemn you. That's why Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But that doesn't mean there is no conviction. 
Conviction will be there. Holy Spirit convicts you. Conviction gives you hope. Condemnation, condemnation makes you hopeless. Some people sometimes accuse me. They say, you are not a proper preacher. That's why so many thousands are coming to hear you. Because you are a motivational preacher. I tell them, I preach Bible. My Bible doesn't preach condemnation. It preaches conviction. I tell people, if you are living in sin, God can change you. I don't say continue in sin. I say you, you will go to hell, but you don't need to go to hell. You can go to heaven. Amen. I don't condemn people. I help the Holy Spirit conviction in the hearts of people. And people love truth. I'm telling you, peep, only some jokers who don't like it, but majority likes truth. They love to hear the truth. The other day, one family told me, we come from 40 kilometers. And the way you preach, because every Sunday they come late. So they were telling me, from 40 kilometers we are coming. So that's why we become late. And every now and then you'll be scolding us. But still we come on the way there are so many churches. But we miss all those. And I, we come there because you say the truth. Why should I lose that family? No? I will say truth only. Amen. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit convicts you with the truth. Holy Spirit convicts you. You get hope in your heart. And change becomes imminent. The Bible says godly sorrow leads to repentance. What is the meaning of that? When God puts a conviction in your heart, you may feel hurt, but you will change and you will repent because he gives you the power for that. Oh, yes, he does. Conviction is specific. Condemnation is generic. Holy Spirit convicts us. Okay, I want to close. This month, we're going to study about the Holy Spirit. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You know, when you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you will feel Jesus. Because Holy Spirit came to show Jesus. The more you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you feel the more you are in touch with Jesus. Because he's come to reveal Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So should I pray to God? You pray to the Father, you pray to Jesus, you pray to the Holy Spirit. All the same, don't worry. Amen. Luke 11 and verse 13. I love the scripture. If you then. See, very hard to read. Let's read properly. If you then. Uh -huh, know how to give. How much more? Hallelujah. Pastor, I prayed for Holy Spirit. But I have a fear if devil came. Is it psychology? Is it emotionalism? I want to tell you, God is saying, if you evil people who have such evil thoughts know how to give good gifts to those that you love, how much more your heavenly father who is good will give only Holy Spirit and will give more of his Holy Spirit to those who ask him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please. Please doubt anybody, but don't doubt the goodness of God. God is a good God. Let's say that together. God is a... Let's say that again. God is a... When you pray to him, he will not give you anything negative. Many people have these confusions because of Christian rhetoric and Christian traditional wrong thinking. Oh, God gave me that sickness. Oh, God gave me that disease. Oh, God gave me that problem. Oh, God gave me this trouble so I become more like Jesus. Jesus did not say, I'll give you trouble so you'll become like me. No, he said, I give you my word. I give you my Holy Spirit so you'll become more like me. In this world you will have trouble, but I will be with you. Not as the troublemaker, but as the trouble solver. Greater than the trouble that you go through. Amen. God works through trouble. God uses trouble in our life to shape us. But he doesn't give us that trouble necessarily. Many of our troubles happen because we live in a broken world. Many people suffered during COVID. God didn't send it. China fellow sent it. <laughs> or whoever sent it. God doesn't send problems. God sends solutions. God didn't create death. God created life. 
God didn't create bad. God created good. God didn't create curses. God created blessings. And God said, I keep blessings and curses before you. Choose what you want. And God said, I recommend you choose life and choose blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. This is so important to understand. When you ask the Holy Spirit, he gives you good things. Every good thing is not necessarily from God. But everything from God is good. Holy Spirit is given to us not because of our quality of nature. Holy Spirit is given to us because of God's quality of nature. Because God only gives Holy Spirit. He doesn't give unholy spirit. His nature is giving Holy Spirit. Because his quality, like I, this confusion. Can I have Holy Spirit? Pastor, I am working in IT. What will I do with Holy Spirit? Fellowship. God created you. I started today in Holy Communion with the first line. You didn't come from your parents. You came from God. You came through your parents. But you came from God. Why did God create us? Because God is love. He wants fellowship. God's purpose of your life is fellowship with you. Which will last into eternity beyond the grave. Hallelujah. God loves that. And he wants to have that fellowship with us. But pastor, I can't feel God, I can't hear God, I can't see God. This is very important, correct feeling. When God gives you Holy Spirit, why is it we can't experience, recognize God? All of us when we were born, we were born with eyes, ears, nose, mouth. Some are looking surprised, what happened? <laughs> Did you go and buy somewhere? No. It, you, we are manufactured with it, no? Please say, yes, I have other things to preach. Nobody here went shopping. Mouth shop, nose shop, ear shop. No. When you were born, you were born as a package. Everything was there. Then in the house, they taught you how to use it. And in the school, they trained you how to use your eyes and your ears and your nose. and They trained you how to use it. Similarly, when you are born again, the day you receive Christ, you are born again with the full package. That's why you need to come to church to train yourself on how to use the package God has put inside you. Yes. This is so very important. When you are born again, you are born again with the fullness of Christ in you. But for the development to happen... I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, Sunday coming to church is worth your money and effort. Hallelujah. God is building something in your life. Your ability to see by faith, your ability to discern hearing the voice of the Spirit, He would develop it. It's so important. I don't do special conferences on prophetic and healing and I don't do special conferences. There's no pay 500 rupees and learn how to prophesy. Pay 1000 rupees and get the healing anointing. I don't do all those things. So right now. No, I don't do all those. Because Jesus taught me, freely have you received, freely give. I'm not against conferences. I love conferences. Uh, only thing I don't believe in the business making model. I, I believe in the serving model. And I'm not against those who do business. God gave them that, let them do. But just because you are not charged an amount for today's message, please don't think it is cheap. It came at a very high cost of hours of seeking God and hours of working on what God wants spoken today. <laughs> Absolutely. And this happens week after week. Train. Train yourself to understand and see through the eyes of the Spirit. Because this is so important. Getting insights from God concerning our future is important. But more important is getting to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And I want to close with a story. You all enjoyed today's message? A story about David. David... From Ziglag. Many people tell me, Pastor, uh, every now and then one David story you will bring. <laughs> Correct. 
because it's in the Bible. I don't know, some people are uh, He-Man, Iron Man, Spider-Man. <laughs> David was a man according to God's heart. And if I am preaching, Bible stories will come. Because I am preaching Bible. I am not preaching Cartoon Network. <laughs> this fellow called David, he goes with his people to fight. Unfortunate things happen. Actually good for him. He is not allowed to fight. He comes back. When he comes back to Ziglag, it's a place. <laughs> His wife, everything, his people's family, everything is stolen by some other gangs that came. Some 300, 600, everything is stolen and gone. 300, 600 people or 1000 people, all stolen and gone. Sold as slaves. He's so broken. You know, two, three days you traveled, you wanted work, work as a militia. And you got rejected, your application got, when you come back with your 400 men or 600 men, what do you see? Your houses, your flat, everything, not only your TV, radio, gold is stolen, your wife is stolen. Brother, don't say Amen. <laughs> everything is taken, children are taken, gone. <laughs> Bad condition. The gang that was with David took stones to throw at David. You know, there are something called fair weather friends. They love you when everything goes good and when everything goes bad, they'll hate you. David was the leader of that gang. <laughs> Many people think, oh, he enjoyed as a king. Yeah, this is how he enjoyed. <laughs> the Bible says, but he strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And then he asked God, God, what should I do? Look at the progression there. First, learn to enjoy the Holy Spirit. Then take his counsel. The problem here is, we run for the counsel with no relationship of enjoying the Holy Spirit. In the worst situation, when he needed counsel first, David still knew what the priority was. Urgent is not priority. Important is priority. I don't want to fellowship with people and the concept of me being killed. I want to fellowship with the person of the Holy Spirit. He went to God and found his peace in God, found his strength in God, found his purpose in God. He strengthened his inner man. And then he said, God, whether you guide me or no, whether I'm a failure or a success, I love you, Jesus. Give me your plan. And God gave the plan. And the Bible says, David recovered everything. When you and I learn to fellowship with the Holy Spirit, recovery is just a step away. Restoration is just a step. Go ahead, give God a big hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Close your eyes and say, Father, I heard your word today and I'm committed to your word today. I really rededicate my life to your holy word. I want to be a man after your heart. I want to seek you and fellowship with you and learn to enjoy you and find strength from you. Help me, Lord, that in my busy schedule, I don't insult your grace by just running for your counsel, just running for your power, just running for your gift. No, give me that wisdom to enjoy your presence and to find your strength before I can seek your power. May I know you, Lord, more than I know your gifts. May I know you more than I know your blessings. Oh, that I can fellowship with your Holy Spirit. Oh, that Jesus would be made more real to me. Wherever you are, ask the Lord today saying, Father, I really submit to your word. I don't know how to go about this, but you show me. You show me, Lord Jesus, by your Holy Spirit, you lead me. I rededicate my life this month, week after week, as I study about your Holy Spirit. Oh, I want to receive more of your Holy Spirit. I want to receive more of your person, more of your presence, more of you, Jesus. 
Heavenly Father, this morning, every one of us here are guilty in some way or the other. And thank you for your convicting presence, which gives us hope for a better future. That as we correct ourselves, you are merciful and you are gracious. Hallelujah. Thank you that you not only forgave our sins, but you also paid the price for our blessings. Thank you for your grace. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you for your fellowship. We receive your favor. We receive your grace. In Jesus' name we pray and the people said, Amen. Shall we all stand? We'll sing a song before we pray. What a fellowship. What a joy divinely. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind leading on the everlasting life. I'm leading, Lord, I'm leading, safe and secure from through your word. Thank you that your word is living. Your word is life. Your word is powerful. Thank you, Father God, for teaching us through the, today through your word the importance of having fellowship with your Holy Spirit. And we, we pray, Father God, that you would strengthen each one of us, Father God, to have the deeper, deeper fellowship 
with you. We bless your holy name. Father, thank you that those who are here today for the very first time in the name of Jesus, we speak forth your blessings upon them. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will convict their hearts, that their lives will never ever be the same again. Dear Lord, we pray for those who are traveling this week. May your divine presence go with them. Lord, we pray for your hand of grace and favor, your protection to rest upon their lives. We also pray for those who are celebrating their birthdays, their marriage anniversaries this week. Thank you for adding yet another year into their lives. Lord, we pray that the years ahead will be blessed and fruitful by you. Dear Lord, at this time, we remember our dear pastor who celebrates his birthday this week. Thank you so much, Father God, for giving him as a blessed shepherd, Lord, over the church. We pray, Father God, that this year that he will be blessed by you, that your divine grace, your anointing, good health and strength, your wisdom, Father, we speak it upon his life. We bless your holy name, Father. At this time, we pray for for, I mean, people who have given us the offering, the tithes and the offering, bless the hands that has given. Let them not lack any good thing. May your divine provision, Lord, rest upon each one of our lives. Father, we pray that this week will be a blessed, blessed week of walking in fellowship with you, or oh, having the divine communion of the Holy Spirit over our lives. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the sweet abiding presence of the Holy Spirit rest and be with us from now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. We want to take this time to welcome all of you who are here for the very first time. Those who are watching us online today, come on church, give them a very warm welcome. And those who are here, we would love to meet you in our guest lounge. And as you go out today, you will have your cakes, and that is our pastor's birthday cake. So please have that. And if you need prayers, our pastors are here right in the front as well as in the overflow. God bless you, and have a blessed week.